with the ovarian cancer with the BRCA mutation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first uh, make a step away from highly scientific information. The, the weather is, is the weather is actually very good for demonstrating you this uh, snowman. Everyone sees snow people. Does anyone see a panda? Does anyone see panda? I didn't see at the beginning as well. But actually we do have one here. Probably this is not the best comparison, but I believe that this is how it works when we look for our patients with BRCA mutations. Usually they look exactly as all the others and we, our goal is to find that small group, about 20%, who will react better to this most efficient treatment. So let's look for pandas and let's treat pandas. My goal is to tell you about the experiences that we have now. That's this SOLO study that uh, studies PARP inhibitors. SOLO 1, SOLO 2, SOLO 3. Those are mostly started in, 20, started in 2013. We expect them to end in 20s. Though in April 2017, we already had reports from SOLO 2 study and at the end of 2017 we expect the results of solo one in the first line and solo three that's why let's start with the solo two the one that we know about already why is that important well first this is the third phase study because we know that the laparip is usually registered for the second phase but there were of course skeptics who were expecting waiting for the third phase uh, statistically uh, proven studies and the second uh, difference of the solo two is that we didn't use capsules registered in our country but pills um, just my colleague told you capsules are like 16 capsules per day this is quite a bunch and uh, this can actually cause component uh, deviations tablets we have like four of them two and two a day not to spend that much time we'll explain you in general terms dosage 300 milligrams two times a year a day it's equivalent to the capsule dosage 400 milligrams two times a day so that's why we started pills solo three study was the third stage uh, double blind randomized clinical trial uh, criteria of inclusion is basically the same as of the uh, trial 13 cirrhosis and the mitral ovarian cancer with sensitive uh, relapses. Uh, people who, who received more than two lines of therapies with the response. Basically, it's all the same, but there was one difference who's who was <laughs> that was very important for me. Uh, the one with mutation. Then the patient divided into those who received alaparib and into the group that received placebo. Two to one was the ratio. We see that the key point here is the time without progression and the secondary time is like time without progression to overall life quality, safety, security and etc. If we have a look at the characteristics of the patients, we'll see that both group in the uh, IP and placebo group could be compared uh, zeros and the metrigoid type we see the number of lines of chemotherapy like about 50 60 percent of uh, people received pop inhibitors uh, of support after the second line of the therapy and half of them uh, who got three and more than four lines of therapy we remember about this criteria right in the parenthesis in brackets the patient has to have a response to chemotherapy that was my criteria and that is also relevant for BRCA mutation patients who are quite responsive to chemotherapy here we see that almost in 50% of the cases there was total response uh, complete response to the treatment and in the same uh, number of cases the partial response in progression we see that there is a 40% uh, of uh, in placebo group, 40% in relapse. 
I'll skip that. So the results of the study of the preliminary analysis of SEOL2 that were reported in April this year, we see that there is a statistical difference, significant, significantly statistical difference of the time without progression. You see, 5.5 and 19.1 time of month with PARP inhibitors. We see that we decrease the risk with so many percents. This is quite a good result. If we compare it with the trial 19 that Adelphia Dorovna demonstrated, we can compare those as well. The patients, this is the curve for PRCA um, mutation nine in trial 19 and the curve for uh, BRCA solo. Well, they live basically the same 4.3 by 5.3 uh, in both trials and when they use PARP inhibitors we see the medium here 11 month in the trial 19 and 19 month in solo 2 trial uh, I guess this data this data is statistically important if we have a look at the secondary end point now we're analyzed we see that the medium is not there yet because we didn't have enough events to make conclusions we're going to expect that for upcoming conferences i guess they will be presented soon and we see that the next therapy after pop inhibitors usually the period of uh, between the next therapy is 20 months which is quite a good result but when I start talking with my colleagues about what does that happen, it's hard to say whether the cell division process is slowing down. Probably that's related to something else. But we can start the next chemotherapy line later if we use PARP inhibitors. We see clinically significant differences here, the mortality. Um, possibility rate and time till next chemotherapy line. A laparate group, uh, we are not there yet, so we're expecting results. Placebo group, this result is 18 months, and uh, this does not change. Don't change. If you have a look at toxicity, it's basically comparable with study 19. We see that every toxicity of the third grade uh, appeared like the one third of patients which is quite logical if the drug is working there is some toxicity you can't really avoid that uh, serious adverse events uh, SAEs were in 18 percent of the cases uh, any uh, adverse events were there in 18 cases and in in uh, um, two eight percentage of any serious adverse events and two percent of um, people who didn't really continue participating in the trial. That was placebo group. And um, if we have a look at the toxicity spectrum, this is what we'll see. Really, there is nausea uh, when there is pop inhibitor in, in tablets, in pills. But in the third stage, very way lower than if that uh, that in case of capsules. If we're talking about a laparib, there is kind of adaptation to that after four weeks and the patient responds quite good to that so if you start started giving this drug to your patients and they feel nauseous please ask them to wait because anti-mutagenic therapy actually causes that another important thing is anemia the mechanisms uh, its mechanism is not clear yet but in 19 percent of the cases we see the third grade toxicity here and it doesn't appear from the very beginning we have to remember that that's why we have to monitor the hemoglobin level of our patients. The other hematological toxicity um, is not that frequent, less than 5% of the cases, third stage. So I guess the same figures are for placebo group. I want to note also that the uh, in placebo group, 33.3% uh, of the nausea, one third of people who received placebo felt nauseous, so it works. So, what are the conclusions of solo two trial? We can tell that preliminary data of intermediate analysis demonstrates that there is statistically a significant increasing of time without progression for 19.1 um, months uh, in the group of laparib, and uh, we have also 5.5 increase of this time in placebo group. Uh, the time without um, progression is also uh, 
well, the period before first and second line of chemotherapy grows longer. And well, if just go very briefly about other trials that we're expecting to continue, solo one, we participate in that as well. Uh, their patients uh, are administered Alaparib versus placebo. In the group of uh, patients after first line of therapy, we really expect the results. And now it's, well, quite started really recently, solo three trial, Alaparib as the line of treatment, not as supporting therapy. Uh, these are for people with BRCA mutation. Thank you, I guess.